What's up, Josh? Good to see you here. Nice to nice to have you on the Nooner today. My buddy James showed up. Good to see you. Welcome, welcome. This is the Nooner. We're on episode 120 of these bad boys. I'll do that later. Thank you guys for being here. Appreciate you participating. Miles showed up. Good to see you. Episode 120. Asking the big question. Who said it takes money to make money? Who said that? And is it even real? So let me introduce myself to you guys. Tell you who you're talking to or who's talking to you. Uh, this is the Nooner. Every weekday, Monday through Friday, Pacific Standard Time, 12 o'clock noon. I'm dropping in here and I'm going to deliver to you a noontime nugget about sales, business, or life. Three things you want to know about me and why I'm qualified to deliver a noontime nugget about sales, business, and life. Number one, I'm a sales and marketing manager with Grant Cardone. I've been working with Grant Cardone since March of 2011, and I've been studying his material since 2003. Grant took me from barely surviving in sales to thriving in it in a very, very short period of time. And in 2011, I got this really killer opportunity to come work uh, for Grant, with Grant, give this knowledge to other people. So I'm in the help business. I get paid to help people get better. Cannot, cannot argue with that. Um, so that's what I do. Now, if, you, if you're wondering about Cardone training technologies, what we do in our company is we work with individuals and large groups and anything in between to help find and then handle missed opportunity. We can typically stimulate a production increase between 15 and 30 percent in a very short period of time. So if you've got some interest in that, if that's of any value to you, feel free to reach out to me at any time. Uh, David at GrantCardone.com is my email address. Phone number 310-777-0352. That number rings right at my desk. Happy to help any way I can. 75 percent of what we do here is 100 percent free. These nooners, I'm not charging for these things. It's free. Uh, two other things on me. I'm the founder of a hashtag called Rich Man's Gym. This is about home-based strength and conditioning for body, mind, and spirit. I don't believe you got to go to the gym to get the best shape of your life. You can do it in the garage. You can do it in the backyard. You can do it at the local park. You can do it down at the beach. Anywhere you can lug a set of kettlebells. Any place you can take some dumbbells. Any place you can uh, take some Olympic rings and throw them over a big fat tree. That is your Rich Man's Gym. Okay. Third thing on me, I'm the author of a book called How to Stop Smoking Without Killing Anyone. I smoked cigarettes for uh, 15 years, could not quit to save my life. I mean, I tried many, many times, but then I found a way to stop. Now, there's a big difference between stopping and quitting, and that's the topic of my book. So if you got a monkey on your back, if you got a habit you need to kick before the habit leads to you kicking the bucket, check that book out, stopdon'tquit.com. That's the best place to go to get a, uh, the definitive method to kick in the habit. If you want more information on Rich Man's Gym, visit the blog, richmansgym.com. You want more information on me and Grant, check out cardonsolutions.com. And let's get into today's topic, shall we? So uh, 120 of these nooners. The big question is who said, I mean, who said this? It takes money to make money. What does that mean? Do you agree? That's the big point. That's the big question. Do you believe that it takes money to make money? And then the implication is, is that it takes a lot of money to make a lot of money. And if you don't have it, then you can't. And then therefore, why bother? Okay. So I got some notes here. So I just want to make sure that the question I'm about to ask resonates with you guys. So for those of you that are just tuning in, new people, what do you believe? Do you believe that it does truly take money to make money? I want to get some comments from you down below. Does it truly take money to make money? Yes or no? Is that a true statement? Is that a false statement? Okay, and then we'll talk about it in a second. But here's the question. What if, what if it turned out that the whole phrase, it takes money to make money, turned out to be just a big fat lie? Some big fat lie that was perpetrated on the world by people who what? who've already given up, who have decided that it ain't going to happen for me. What if it really, what if all it really took to make money 
was courage. What if that's all it took? Courage. Right? So for those of you that have seen Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, you got Alec Baldwin, he's walking across, grabs his briefcase, he's like, you know what it takes to sell real estate? What does he do? He holds up, what does he got? What does he got? Right? Takes brass balls to sell real estate. Remember that speech? Okay. What if all it took to make money was courage? And the lack thereof could be the very reason why so many people have made it a catchphrase that it takes money to make money because they couldn't handle their fear. They couldn't pass through their fear. They couldn't handle it. And so consequently, they quit. So on Mondays, what I like to do with these nooners is I talk about Grant's strategy of the week from last week. Every uh, Thursday, we fire off a free strategy that Grant writes all on it's some kind of a tip. It's either it's just like the nooner, sales, business, or life. Okay, and it's something that you can use as a piece of motivation to kick into your weekend. If you're in retail and you do sales on the weekend, it's perfect. Um, and today, Grant talks about that. Or last week, he talks about that very thing. The title of his post was, "It takes money to uh, does not take money to make money. It takes courage to make money." And so, what he's inviting you to do, what he's encouraging you. Let's get some comments here. So Jose says, no, it doesn't take money to make money. Uh, Josh thinks it does in real estate, but not in auto sales. Um, James says, I think it takes both money and courage to run a business. Yeah. And we're going to say that it starts with courage. So the concept here is that you're going to have to step outside of the box. You're going to get out, have to get out of your comfort zone. And you may, you may really you will, you're going to have to sacrifice fun in the moment for true freedom later. So if you're at the club more than the bank, that should be a red flag for you. Right? You ever seen that meme? Right? Hey, man, I never see you at the club. And the other guy's like, hey, man, I never see you at the bank. Okay? So you got to make sure your financial house is in order. Okay? So what that means, though, life is not all about you know, the mighty dollar. It's not all about what's in your bank account. Okay. You have a life to live. You have a family to be with and to support and to cherish. Okay. But do you ever notice that there's a lot of people out there that have no fun and no money? I started waking up to this money thing when I heard Grant say, Hey, look, I, it doesn't take money um, money won't make you happy, but if I'm going to be unhappy, I'd like to have $100 million in the bank. Because that is freedom. So how do you get it? Money. If you don't have any, how do you get it? So it takes courage. you got to get out there. you got to get outside of your comfort zone. you got to have courage, and you have to do the things that you're afraid to do. You have to do the things that are scary. You have to do the things that other people refuse to do, that your competition will not do, that they're also afraid of doing. Remember, these are the people that have already decided that it takes money to make money, not that it takes courage. So this is a wake-up call. And it's a tremendous opportunity for you to take a competitive advantage and a competitive lead by doing the things that your competition refuses to do and by having the courage to handle your fear and do what needs to be done. So a good example of this is my, my new buddy Josh over here. He's hanging out on the Nooner today. Josh started a blog recently. He's like, you know what? I got to get that done. He commits first and figures it out later. That's how he rolls. Okay? So... You do not want to pull back from the things that you're afraid of. And fear is a challenging thing to handle. So we're all scared of different stuff, right? Everybody's got their own fear set. Everybody's got their own thing that freaks them out just a little bit. But the more you can handle these things, the more you can overcome them, the more, confidence you will, the more confident uh, you will become. So if you pull away from anything in life, whether that's investing or 
getting more education or more training or pulling away from meeting new people, newer people, um, or going to meetings. When you're pulling away from that, that's a retreat. We talk about it in this book. We talk about it, the danger of that. We talk about it, and if you're not first, you're last. Um, it doesn't help. It's never inspiring, and it's never motivating. Okay, So what I wanted to do is, is, is a couple things. So we talk about it in this book as well. So let's isolate and identify what fear stands for. So there's a couple different anacronyms or... Uh, phrases that people have said uh, what fear means. Well, Grant okay, dropped a bomb and a good one for me. And fear, fear stands for false events appearing real. So I'm going to be talking about two things, a couple different things that I thought were very liberating for me was the first one I heard, it, you know, money won't make you happy, but if I'm going to be unhappy, I'd like to have $100 million in the bank. That just made sense to me, okay? So the goal then would be to have 100 million and be happy, okay? So in order to do both those things, you need to get a handle on your fear. And if fear truly is false events appearing real, then where does the fear lie? Up here. Now, if I walk out of this house right now and there's a bear who looks really pissed off, I'm going to get scared. But that is not a false event. That's a real event appearing real, right? There's a bear, okay? Somebody breaks into my house, wants to steal my stuff, hurt my family. The fear I experience is real because it's a real thing. But more often than not, people have these weird fears. Some are legit. Fear of flying, for example. Sure, the plane could crash, but you know you're in more danger driving to the airport than you are once you take off. You're in more danger of dying in a car accident than you are uh, in a plane. The odds of you dying on the, in the car on the way to the airport are significantly higher than the odds of you crashing in that plane. So what does that mean? It means you are now comfortable functioning in this danger zone that is your car. So when you have false events that are appearing real happening for you, like I need to make the sales call, I have to call this guy, it's a cold call, he's gonna hang up on me, he's gonna make some weird judgment about me that he doesn't, and he doesn't even know me, and um, he's gonna finally expose me for the fraud that I am, or whatever it is that's going on in your head. Okay, it's a false event and it's appearing real and so therefore you're having a physical reaction to it as if it was a bear. So how do you handle that? Right? Is that fear? Whatever it is for you, you got your own thing, right? Whatever that fear is for you, how is it holding you back from happiness and having 100 million in the bank? What is that fear doing? Why is it keeping you back? Because if it doesn't take money to make money, if it takes courage to make money, then why are you still allowing a false event that appears real to actually impact your decision-making process of moving towards your happiness and moving towards your $100 million? thought of something. Okay. So now I'm going to give you one, two, three, four, five, six, seven tips to handle your fear. Seven tips to handle your fear. So if you're taking notes, you might want to write these down. I just saw a really cool uh, emoticon pop in. So let me just say hi to that person. Elon, nice to see you. Welcome. Okay, so the first thing to handling false events appearing real is number one, decide that you deserve your hundred million in the bank. Decide that you deserve to be happy. You have to make this decision. Decide that you're worthy. So more often than not, 
Somewhere along the line, we've either made a decision that we don't deserve to be happy, that we're supposed to suffer on this planet so that we'll have this due reward when we get to heaven, right? The first will be last and last will be first, so if I'm last on this planet, then I'll be first when I get upstairs, okay? That doesn't mean... I don't think God put you on this planet to suffer. You are not born to walk this earth to suffer. You came to this earth, you came to this planet to make manifest the glory of God, if we're going to go there. And there's nothing fearful about God. There's nothing... Your playing small does not serve the world, right? That's a great quote from Marianne Williamson. So you need to make the decision that, hey, I deserve to be happy in this life. I deserve to have money. And because you opt for it, nobody else is going to lack. Because there is no lack. It's uh, the universe. Scientists are now proving that there may be more than one. We've thought about it, but now they're starting to get some tangible evidence that there may be more than one. There is no lack. Okay? There's plenty of molecules around to create anything you want in your life. But you have to have the courage to go out and get it and to go out and make it. Okay? So number one, make sure to make the decision and then believe the decision that you are worthy of whatever it is you're going for. That you deserve it. Okay? And then you got to earn it. You got to earn the worthy. Meaning, don't participate in activities that lower your self esteem and self worth. Second thing, identify the fear. Sound too obvious? Yeah, well, but you got to know what it is. If you got bacteria running around and you, you just don't throw, well, I guess they do. But wouldn't it make more sense to isolate the type of bacteria so that you can put the right antibiotic on it versus just this sort of whole napalm effect? Identify the, know what the fear is. What is it that's holding you back? Put your finger on it. Identify it. Know it. If I got a dam and it's leaking, I need to know where the leak is so I can plug it, right? So if you've got something that you're afraid of, Identify it. And maybe you just need to narrow it down. Maybe what you think it is isn't really what it is. Maybe you got to like peel some layers off of that onion before you get down to the, the core. Okay? So identify what the fear is. Okay? Then, then you got to make a commitment, which is what Grant talks about in his strategy. You got to commit to handling this thing. Miles says he's heading out. Hey, uh, you'll catch the remainder in the replay. Good stuff. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you tuning in. Uh, wherever you're heading out to, may it be successful. Um, yeah, commit to overcoming the fear. You got to make a solid commitment to that. Okay, so what have we done? We've decided that we deserve happiness and wealth. We've identified the fear that's keeping us from it. Okay, now we're going to commit to overcome it. You got to make that commitment. I'm gonna, this is my fear. It's handled. I'm going to handle it. You got to commit to overcoming it. Then you got to do it over and over and over and over again. You got to master the fear. Now, if you're a, a paratrooper, being a little afraid every time you jump out of a plane is a good thing. If you're an actor, being a little scared before you step on stage, good thing. Okay? That's real fear, real danger, real risk. Okay. But fear of making a phone call? You're going to do it over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. Now, the thing is, though, you don't want to practice on a client or a potential client, right? That makes no sense because that's expensive. So you need to practice in a safe environment and put it in the game. So if you don't have role play people, if you're in sales or in business, if you don't have or customer service, right? If you don't practice getting yelled at, look, nobody likes getting yelled at, so you might as well practice it. So that when it happens for real, you're better prepared. If I told you in 30 days 
you're going to get in a fight. Doesn't matter where you go, doesn't matter what you do, it doesn't matter what happens, in 30 days, you're going to get in a fight. Would you prepare? Would you practice? Would you be ready so that when that happened, you'd win? Yes. You'd be better prepared to conquer your fear. And if that fight was your fear, wouldn't it make sense? Okay? So you got to practice it. Then you got to put it in the game. And you got to repeat it over and over and over and over. And that's why in our office, before we get on the phones, we role play for 20 minutes. We practice it, and then we put it in the game. Okay? Last thing you want to do is you want to debrief it. So at the end of your day, you want to debrief. You're going to be like, hey... What, ha what was successful today? What did I do that was amazing? Celebrate it. And then, how did I screw up? Where did I miss out, right? So if you're a champion boxer, after the fight, you watch the film, right? You watch the tape. Hey, what did I do that worked? And then how did I screw up? If you lost the fight, you're looking for how you lost the fight. If you won the fight, you're looking for how did I win. Either way, you want to debrief your experience so that you can use the knowledge of the experience to grow and handle the F-E-A-R, the false events appearing real. So, that's that. What you guys hear today that you like? Tweet out to me. Uh, one word or one concept or one uh, piece of knowledge or nugget that you got out of today's Nooner. I'm going to come back tomorrow. We're going to be talking about a different uh, trait of greatness tomorrow. Uh, I'm not going to be out on uh, Wednesday, Thursday, but then I'll be back on Friday. Let me just give you a rundown. Tomorrow, we're talking about negativity and staying positive. That's a good thing, right? No negativity allowed here, okay? And then on Friday, we're going to talk about five scary sales training uh, statistics and what to do about them. So this has been episode 120 of The Nooner. Uh, I am your host. My name is David Bradley. I appreciate you guys coming and hanging out with me this afternoon. Have a great week. See you guys tomorrow. Do something you're afraid to do today. Do it. Get her done.